Hi, this is Carl, US Radio Guy, going to uh, show you a little bit about using layers within SatDump. Um, so I got SatDump opened on the screen. Um, I'm assuming you've already been able to either record or capture imagery. This one is just about using the layer settings. So we're going to go to Viewer and we're going to open up a data set. Um, I'm going to use Meteor. There's some uh, NOAA captures I got there. Um, hold on, let me go to input. That one. Open this data set. Okay, there's a meteor image. Hasn't been processed. It's just the grayscale, but look at that smoke over Canada. Wow. And we'll give that a nice color image. And we'll add a map overlay to that. We'll change the border to yellow. And we're going to change the cap, just capitals to capitals and regional capitals, but reduce the size on that because otherwise it gets a little large. We'll leave them in red. Give it a second to populate those, in, or those cities. And then we need to create a projection out of it. So we go here to project. Click Project, and what that does is puts that layer over here in the Projections options. So if you click on this, you'll see our layer is there. I'm going to drop that down, get a little more space here. Okay, so now, um, how to add a layer. There's a couple of different ways. Um, the most common way, or the simplest way, is to add an equirectangular image, and there are uh, SatDub does come with one. You could download them from the internet. It's basically any base layer in an equirectangular format um, that corresponds to the map that you're using, which I should explain. So let me just generate this projection right now. Okay, so it has generated a projection based on the coordinates I gave it, which is 90 and 180 and 10 degrees latitude, 50 degrees, because I really don't, uh, my chances of getting uh, a capture in sub-Saharan Africa or Western Siberia are pretty limited. So I basically just want to focus on the area that I'm able to receive captures on. So I'm going to add an ec another equirectangular image. Now SatDump does have one built into it. Um, if you go to the resources section, click on maps, um, they're not, he has a standard. This is a NASA Blue Marble HD image. A lot of people use this with the software Sanchez. And we're going to add that as a layer. It'll pop it up here in just a second. There it is. Now we're going to generate a projection. Now, it overlaid my meteor image right on top of that um, base layer, which is the NASA blue marble image. You can do a blend of the images so that you get some opa opacity if you want. You can change the opacity just by dragging that slider back and forth here on either of those. So if you wanted to see, just, just see what this one does, I think this will make the background a little more transparent. No, maybe not. Um, we'll change that back. Um, let's turn that one off so we just have meteor again and then uh, we'll add another layer i'm going to pick a different equirectangular image because i create these oops i just duplicated it i don't want that um, let's add a layer i want to open a new file and i'm going to go to some of the imagery i do on a daily basis. Let's do uh, false color reprojections. These are ones that I do using GOES 16, 17, 18, GK2A, Himawari 9, Electro L2, EWSGN, or EWSG1, soon to be G2. We'll pick yesterday's. My system has, it's not time yet, it hasn't processed the data from today. And we'll add that as a layer. There's my imagery there. So now we'll go ahead and generate a projection 
using meteor images and geostationary satellite images. There we go. So that is how that looks. Now you notice the clouds don't line up exactly. Like I said, my background image is dated basically 12 hours prior to my meteor image. So of course the clouds have shift positions and have changed a little bit. Um, there's one more option you can do uh, or that I use and that's using a tile map. Um, you can pick different ones. Uh, he has one standard, this open tile map, open street map. I'll let that one load up. I'm going to close my background one up. And it's just a basic world map. We'll add a, oops, we already added the layer. We'll generate that. There. And you see it's just a basic utility image of the, uh, the area that I have selected. Um, let's pick something a little different, um, add a layer, I'm going to go, I have a list of these that I'm working on to see which ones work well with, uh, sat dump, and surprisingly there's not a lot because it takes a kind of a different format. Um, we'll add this one, tile map, and replace this directory, or this, uh, URL with this one and this is going to pull images from the mesonet so it's hard to see in the little box here it's already generated it um, let me see if I can get it onto the screen okay so what I've done is picked up data from all the NEXRAD radar stations in the continental US and Alaska and Hawaii and applied them to the map um, so that if you wanted, you could, let's see, I can move these two so we can get that map on top of the other one. We'll generate that again, see how that looks. Oops, I lost Meteor. Got to put that on top. We'll change it to Blend and see what that looks like. There we go. So now I got NextRad radar data overlaid over the top of Meteor data. And then if I wanted to, I could add back um, one of these other images as well. There we go. So now I'm basically showing three layers of data on one map. Um, the other feature that's possible with uh, Sat Dump is this other where you can uh, change the, if you have a precise projection you'd like, you have a map of, Let's say it's orthographic or stereo. You could write a pro, uh, projection config file, open it, and add that as a layer. That's a little more complicated. Um, you now going back up here, you can also change the the base the standard um, projection that's available in Sat Dump. So we'll pick a stereo projection and see if that works. It's going down here. There it goes. So now I see it's uh, hit, oh, because I've got the coordinates changed. I haven't changed the coordinates. Um, let's go to a Mercator projection. That should be a good one. That's a pretty standard one that's used in like WX to image and uh, Meteor GIS. There we go. So now I've plotted that out in a uh, Mercator projection of the Earth. And I can add and move those layers around if I want. But that's a basic example and demonstration of how these uh, layers work in Sat Dump. Uh, next, maybe I'll try to do a uh, raw okay. file. Okay, you, Carl here, US Radio Guy again. I'm going to show you how to just do a basic decoding offline processing of a NOAA APT file. In this case, I'm just going to pick a. Uh, a file that was recorded from uh, WX to image, which you have to change the settings a little bit because uh, it's actually um, a float 32 encoding. So you need to change this to F32. Uh, you need to put an output file under this. You want to select wave. And then normally in sat dump, it starts out as auto because it's going to look for that data information for the name of the satellite, which I entered here as 19, 
and the file timestamp. So I don't, uh, for some reason, WX to image when it saves the audio doesn't save that in the Float32 configuration. So I'm going to plug in the date when the, the pass started, which was today, September 25th at 15.03 UTC. Go ahead and we'll click Start. And I'm going to pause while this processes so you just don't have to watch a boring screen. You can see at the top here, the lines are filling in from the data. Let me pause. Okay, it's been a few seconds. Now we're almost done with the initial processing. Now you'll see another screen that'll pop up on this where it's going to take and process the uh, two channels into the different uh, outputs from the AVHRR. You're going to get MSA, MCIR, uh, a pristine image uh, similar to what um, APT decoder or WX to image decodes as. And I'm going to pause it while processes all that. Okay, it's just about done processing. That looks like it took uh, 30 seconds, 40 seconds so far to process what I'm seeing. And when it's done, it'll pop you back to that original screen. Still got that one going. Now it's doing MCIR rain projection, done the MSA mapping. Oh, there we go. So we're back to this screen. Now, where did the image go? Well, it's over here in Viewer. Click on Viewer, and there is the raw image of, uh, the, of a composite of those. If we wanted to, actually, let me go to the file folder. So there are the images it's already created. You could stop right here, load one of those up. Um, let's see. Oh, MSA looks pretty good there. Let me just load that up. In a, so you can see what that looks like um, in a viewer. Um, go back. Oh, we'll get a different one. We'll do uh, RGB MCIR. There's that one. And, oops. So now you can also choose to uh, redo these in within uh, uh, so many pieces of software within soft uh, sat dump as well and uh, create an uh, MSA pre preset also and you can see it's applying the formula to that. And then you can add borders if you want. Um, change if you say you want red borders. And we'll change cities to, I don't know, blue. Change the size, we'll reduce them, and then do capitals plus regional capitals, which will give us a, quite a few other names. Um, namely uh, state capitals, in our case, uh, be pro uh, provincial capitals or uh, other th other capitals across the world. And I'll do a projection on this. Go over here to projection. Um, I've already got some loaded up from my other ones. Uh, let's see. Let's generate a projection with that. And that's using an equa re rectangular image. Oops, I took that, did a little too much on that one. And I'm going to go back to an equa rectangular projection. Make it look a little nicer. There we go. There's Alaska. There is the United States. And faintly on that is the... Uh, NOAA, or yeah, the AVRHR image. I'm going to bump that to the top, see if we can bring it to the forefront again a little better. There we go. 
So there is the NOAA 19 image projected over the continental United States as it passed in an equa rectangular image. All right, that's it for now. U.S. Radio Guy, I'm out of here.